Nebraska Boys State Basketball Tournament. Wood River getting set to take on Hardington Cedar Catholic. This is Brian Gallagher along with Carl Dees from the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip-off in just a moment. We will again be playing in the white jerseys with the purple trim. Meanwhile, Hardington Cedar Catholic will be in the traveling red. And once again, the Eagles are going to have to make an adjustment. Lance Parlin injured an ankle in the warm-ups, was scheduled to start, was helped to the training room, and has yet to make his way back on the floor. So we'll have to see what type of adjustment Dale Smith and the staff plan to make. We undoubtedly will see a lot more action from Troy Ruge. Would anticipate that he would start. In fact, he's got his warm-up off. Jason Real saw some minutes yesterday, but this could mean more time for Robbie Zavala and for Rich Soto today. Eagles into the contest with a record of 16 and 6. Hardington Cedar Catholic is in with a mark of 19 and 4. They too had some late season struggles, falling to Norfolk Catholic and Bloomfield just before the districts began. But then Cedar Catholic avenged a regular season loss to Bloomfield. And then down Randolph and got by Wakefield in overtime to get into Lincoln and then yesterday beat Mitchell in the first round. Number 20, Ruby. An outstanding job, but it's a little bit different starting. It's going to be interesting to see how he reacts to the starting role. Had he had a chance to start during the year? Not at all. Robbie Zavala started a couple games when Shane Fitz was hurt, so Robbie may see a lot of playing Number time today. The officials today are Rick Cook of Omaha and Gary Fence of Lincoln. Number 15, 6'1", Omaha and Gary Frank. The starters for Huntington Peter Catholic for the Trojans. Number 15, Aaron Frank. Number 33, 6'1", sophomore. At 10 points yesterday, first goalie is out, 5'9", senior, Ryan Samuels is the big man, 6'6", junior, 21 points and 11 rebounds a game this year. Their center is Eric Mueller, Eric Mueller a 6'2", sophomore, Darren Becker, check that, Becker is the center at 6'6", and the senior. Tom Steiner is now being introduced for Wood River. And again, Lance Harlan suffering an injury during the pregame warm-up. You try to imagine what's going through his mind. Here he is literally minutes away from a state semifinal berth and something happens. And I know he's going to do everything he can. And the trainers undoubtedly will too to try to get him in here for some action on the sports center floor. Number 45, Scott Frost. Number 53, 6'1", Junior, and Peter Singleton. The rest of the above, the occasion just play that much harder. Uh, it's going to be interesting how the supporting staff comes along here. Well, yesterday they turned it up after the slow start, going 0 for 6 to start out the contest. Taking charge. In fact, once they grabbed that 16-14 lead yesterday, they never gave up the lead. So a solid effort yesterday by the Eagles after the shaky start. Again, the winner will be going on to the state championship contest. That'll be here tomorrow at the Sports Center. <laughs> Game to follow here will be Wahoo and Elkhorn Mount Michael. And as Carl mentioned yesterday, a chance to see a new scoring record set. Scoring records this point, but then Paul Simmons, Sacred Heart's got a kid that's in the neighborhood too, so we have a possibility of two people shattering that. Yes. Jumping against Ryan Samuelson, the semifinals of the C1 State Basketball Tournament. I'm Brian Gallagher with Carl Dietz. Action coming your way on KSYZ, Grand Island, Hastings, Kearney. Wood River controls the opening tip. And Troy Ruge. Starts to set the offense as Carl anticipated man to man put up by Hardington Cedar Catholic. The Trojans in red jerseys with blue and white trim. Bounce pass to Steve Frost is slapped away. Coming out of there with it is Darren Becker. And in a mirror performance of yesterday, a turnover in the first possession for Wood River. 
Eagles in white with a purple trim. They're showing a zone defense trying to collapse around postman Ryan Samuelson. 6-4 on one side, 6-6 six, six on the other. Another kid 6-2 inside. Lob pass low. Short range jumper is good. That is Aaron Frank. Good job of getting the ball down inside, drawing the defense, and that gave Frank the open jumper. Real well that time. DJ Engelker with the ball in the left. Out to Pitts along the left elbow. Deep in the corner to Engelker. Man to man defense. Ball is slapped away. Good defense by Cedar Catholic. That's another Wood River turnover. They're getting themselves in trouble. Now man to man defense by Wood River. Still waiting to see if Lance Barlin's going to come out after leaving the floor during warm-ups with an ankle injury. Lob pass inside. Kick back out. It's tipped away by Rookie. It goes out of bounds, and the ball will belong to the Trojans. Swing it quickly to the right side. Swing it quickly to the right side. This is Aaron Frank. Kicks it out high. Three-point try is off the mark. Rebound to Hardington and Peter Catholic. Can't get it to go. Inside shot is off the mark. You talk about a guppy. Dar Darren Becker was wide open from three feet. Didn't use the backboard, and I can hear that Did coaching you? coming already. That one knocked out of there. Wood River with a chance to tie. Ross swings it to Ruge, right side. Engelker with the ball at the top of the key. Quickly along the baseline. This is Frost off balance. Good defense. We've got a foul called underneath on Steve Frost. He cut underneath Eric Mueller as Mueller went in for the rebound. Slow start here at the Sports Center. 2-0 lead for Hardington Cedar Catholic. Lob pass low, Samuelson gets the bunny. Good job of using his body to protect the ball. It had an easy two. Samuelson's first bucket. Scott Frost bounces it right side to B.J. Engelker. Now a 1-3-1 zone defense by Hardington Cedar Catholic. Left side, this is Pitts from long range. Knuckleball shot is off the mark. Ball is slapped away, but foul is called on B.J. Engelker. He tried to slap that rebound away from Eric Mueller. And uh, at the other end, Wood River's not doing a very good job of checking out, and they're getting the second shot right now. Two team fouls on Wood River. Trojans with a basketball and an early four. Aaron Frank swing it right side. Samuelson's turnaround jumper is good. Engelker swings it ahead to Frost, an early 6 0 lead. And boy, is this deja vu from yesterday. Right side, this is Pitts trying the three and is slapped out of bounds by Mueller. Good recovery defensively as Eric Mueller came a long way to get a hand on that basketball. Inbounds pass to Ruge. Engelker takes it back in the right corner. Back to the zone of the inbounds play. Ruge to Pitts now across the top of the key as they look for a seam in the zone. Ruge will try a three. That one's off the mark. Ball is loose in the lane and recovered by Samuelson. Wood River's 0 for 4 from the field to start out. Shot left side is off the mark by Frank. Ruge gets the rebound and gets it ahead to Pitts. This is Ruby against him. Now man-to-man -man defense. Samuelson with good anticipation. Steps ahead, comes up from the field, takes it to the goal and in. Turnover number three, bucket number three. Ryan Samuelson has six. Hardington Senior Catholic with an eight-nothing lead. And Dale Smith wants to try out. 3.47 to play in the first quarter. 1991 C1 State Semifinals. It's Huntington Senior Catholic 8. Wood River nothing. How's it sound? 
When okay. you're looking for winning service, winner. Gideon Service of Wood River. Thank you. Back again at the Danani Sports Center. Dale Smith went early to the timeout today to try to get something going. An 8 nothing deficit. With 3.41 to play in quarter number one. Pitts drawing the defensive attention off the right side. Frost and Samuelson match up. Frost with a good baseline move. Shovels underneath. Steve Frost will step in for the two. Nice play. So the Eagles get on the scoreboard. Long shot, three pointers. Long shot, three pointers. Good. That is Kurt Main with the basket. First three of the contest. Robbie Zavala is in for Wood River. Ball is into the hands of Frost underneath. Took it to the goal and drew the foul from 6'6 six, six, Darren Becker. Wood River was on their heels offensively and defensively. Looks like after the timeout, they're going to the basket a little bit harder now. We can get this thing turned around. One of the things that really helped yesterday shake off the uh, poor start was the solid free throw shooting in the first half. The Eagles were 11 of 12 in the line in the first half yesterday. Steve Frost with the first free throw try of the day for each club and makes that one. And it's an 11 3 contest. Arlington Cedar Catholic twice won state championships in Class B during the 80s. Free throws are good for Frost. The score now 11 to 4. Full court pressure by Wood River. A foul is called on B.J. Engelker at midcourt. That's the second foul. That's the second foul on B.J. Dale Smith just kind of shakes his head. Shakes his head. Stands quietly. Under three minutes to go now in the first quarter. Samuelson misses a puppy inside, but offensive rebound is back up and in. You will not see him, you will miss, not many see him miss many from close range. Steal by Cedar Catholic. Wood River in a little bit of a hurry. That is their fourth turnover here in the first quarter. Eagles will not be able to afford a slow start much longer. Becker follows. Foul the play. Check that. That is Samuelson. And that is looking like some inside trouble from Hardington Cedar Catholic. Ryan Samuelson has 10 points in the first quarter. Steve Frost has his second foul. Make that 11 first quarter points for Ryan Samuelson. And Cedar Catholic now with a 16 to 4 lead. B.J. Engelker into the front court. Zips it to Robbie Zavala. Swing quickly now left side. Pitts back right side to Zavala. Into the corner. Scott Frost lets the jumper fly. It's off the mark. Steve Frost rebound back up and in. The shot off and Steve got the rebound. Steve Frost with all six Wood River points. Less than two minutes to go now in the first quarter. Fain lobs it inside Samuelson's spot. Check that. That, that is Becker. We're really spreading the zone out. They're not getting any help down low. Double team. Frost. Scott Frost again tried the penetration. Possession arrow going to Cedar Catholic. 18 to 6 to lead for the Trojans. 132 left to play in the first quarter. Not the thing that he's going to have to do, but uh, once he gets inside there, he's going to have to take a little bit better care of it. Either get the ball in the hole or get it to somebody, get it in their hand. Lobbin. This is Samuelson. Turnaround jumper off the mark. Ball slapped out of bounds. They're going to call a foul on Becker going over the top of Steve Frost. 
That time Steve had good rebound position, had, had him checked out real well. He's gonna have to do more of that. Eighteen to six. Eighteen to six, the lead for Cedar Catholic. Substitution. Frank Lammers is into the game for the Trojans. Becker comes out. Scott Frost with a basketball. Just over a minute to play in the first quarter. Zavala looking for penetration. Cedar Catholic back in the man. Here's Frost in the lane. Slides away from one man. A foul. Blocking foul called. That was Lammers trying to slide over and draw the charge. And Gary Pence says he was a little late. So Scott Frost has got a two-shot chance coming up. Scott's doing a nice job. He's going to have to continue to do, to do that. Uh, Samuelson is matched up against Scott. He got around him, got one step by him, and uh, he tried to get some backfired help defensively, and he got there too late, like I said, Brian, but uh, I think he can take Samuelson to the hole. Third team foul against Cedar Catholic. Scott Frost has his first point. Steve and Scott each had 12 points yesterday. Again, Shane Pitts had 26, but scoreless so far today. But again, five three-pointers yesterday in the second and third quarters really helped to spread out to a 16-point lead and help the Eagles to that first-round win. Less than a minute to play now here at the Sports Center in the first quarter. Pressure by Wood River. Cedar Catholic gets it into the front court nicely. It looks like they like the Real slow about bringing the ball down the floor, and once it just about mishandled it. Counting down the final seconds. Now we're down to 35. Cedar Catholic patiently. Working for a last shot here, leading by 10. 18 to 8, the count. Down to 20 seconds. Wood River putting pressure on the ball with the guards, but they're staying in a zone down deep. Down to 10. Down to 5. Swing it left side, side bounce pass, pass in, Lammers fouled from behind, and foul is going to be on Zavala. The back of him for that. He probably didn't pull, not to let the ball go inside. Once it did go inside, he wanted to get it out of there. That's a, a tough foul with just two and a half seconds left in the quarter. Well, they managed to force a bad shot. I mean, the, the Eagles did a good job of collapsing, and Lammers was in a bad spot, had hands in his face trying to get that shot away, but... Zavala got a piece of him from behind. High arching free throw attempt is no good. Lammers had just two points in the win yesterday for Cedar Catholic. Second shot is good. So Wood River will try and get a shot. Zavala at the buzzer has it tipped away. We have played one quarter. Wood River off to a slow start again. The only thing is, this time they are down by 11 points. At the end of the first quarter from the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln. Hardington, Cedar Catholic, 19. Wood River, 8. To the Eagle, from the staff and residents of Woods Imagine Center, we're seeing some repeat performances from yesterday. Wood River started out slowly shooting from the field, had some early turnovers. Cedar Catholic relying on an inside player to get their points. Now we're going to have to see if the Eagles can put together the type of effort that brought them back yesterday. But again, the Eagles are shorthanded. Lance Parlin came up with an injury in pregame warm-ups and has, now he is back over on the bench area and the left ankle heavily taped and iced. Frost to Frost underneath, Scott to Steve, and there's that little give and go, and it pays off at another two points, and Steve Frost has eight. They gave Steve, or Scott the baseline. He went baseline deep about his brother Steve. So, so they, they cut, cut the lead, lead to back to single digits. 19 to 10, the margin. Samuelson left side. Oh, a soft touch. They just out past the zone coverage there. Scott Frost locks it low. This is Steve right at the bucket. 
The Frost has 10. Probably the shortest postman in the class and has 10 points and is somebody that Peter Kaplan is going to have to spend some time shutting down, which will open things up the other way. Three point try off the mark. Rebound to DJ Engelker. The quick defense of that time cut Hardison off guard just a little bit, forced them to take a shot that I don't think they wanted to take. Shane Pitts with the basketball. Left side, Cedar Kaplan got to the man to man. Samuelson dropping way off Scott Frost now, making sure that he cannot get into the lane. Here's Pitts from three over a screen, and he got it. Shane Pitts finds the range, and suddenly Wood River is back within six. 21 to 15, the Eagle fans come alive. Cedar Catholic with the basketball, lob it low. Samuelson blocked by Frost, but a foul is called. And Dale Smith's over there saying, guys, we have to have defensive help. You've got to double up on him. Scott Frost picks up his first foul. Samuelson at the line with a, another chance at a free throw. Completed a three-point play earlier. Give him 14 points. Trojans will shoot the bonus the rest of the half. Cedar Catholic's been whistled for three fouls. Second shot is good. Their inside game is solid. Now it's a 23 to 15 contest. Scott Frost up against pressure, cuts it to the middle, takes it to the goal. We've got a whistle and a foul away from the shot. Frost with penetration drew the foul in the lane, but before he could get the shot away, the foul is on Eric Mueller. Three defensive players going to the hole that time, but he picked up or they picked up the foul before he got to the basket. That was the last foul to give in the half, so now Wood River will shoot free throws the rest of the way. Scott Frost off balance left side, can't get it to go. Mueller steps in and clears the glass. 23-15 lead for Hardington Cedar Catholic. Kick it right side. Now they work it back down in. Good feed. What a pretty play from Cedar Catholic. Great cross in the lane again from the high side, high back side. Steve Frost misses off the glass. The ball kicked around. Samuelson grabs the rebound. Big chance for Wood River gets away, and all of a sudden that lead is back to 10 with a chance for it to go to 12 for Cedar Catholic. Uh, but inside, Samuelson over the top of the defense. Can't get it. B.J. Engelker steps up to clear the rebound. 25 to 15. Wood River down by 10. They moments ago had it down to six. Cedar Catholic on a 4-0 run. Engelker's jumper is off the mark. We've got a whistle and a foul. A good position by Frost to draw the foul from Samuelson. He had good inside position. Samuelson went up over his back. That's, that's what you got to do. Guys like us, we got to get that position because we know the jumping ain't going to get it done. 5-17 <laughs> to play in the first half. Thane comes out. One and one. Steve Frost with a one-and-one one try, two for two from the line so far. That one kicks away, ball free underneath. Scott Frost, offensive rebound, it's up and in. By Scott Frost. Again, the sophomore with the maturity of a much older player in more ways than one. Lob it inside, Samuelson kicks it low. We've got a whistle and a foul before the shot. Samuelson with a beautiful feed on a give and go to Darren Becker. But the foul will be called on Steve Frost, and now Dale Schmidt will have to check his coaching book once again because Frost again in early foul trouble with three fouls. And a limited bench today. Brandon Reel's going to get the call. Samuelson flashed in the lane, and he didn't get fronted when he was coming to the lane about eight feet from the basket, then he just, just dished it low. You know, if he's not shooting the basket, he's dishing out somebody else that's open, and somehow they've got to keep the ball out of his hands. So far, the Eagles have not been able to run their offense as effectively as yesterday. Samuelson, now with 16, make it 17. This is a nice looking player, and again, he's just a junior. 
27 to 17. Hits with a basketball. Swing it into the left quarter for Engelkirk. Now, Cedar Catholic out in the zone. Mueller went high to pick off that pass. Takes the ball and the goal. Out of bounds. Wood River's going to get it back. Mueller was in a hurry to make that layup happen. Robbie Zavala hustled back down, got a hand in the right place, knocked the ball free, and Mueller ended up carrying it out of bounds. Hustled by Robbie Zavala to keep him from scoring in the lane. Zavala hustles to keep it alive, but a turnover against Wood River. That's their sixth. Samuelson at the other end lays it up there. It is a one-man show here for Hardington Cedar Catholic, and the show is a good one. 29 to 17, Cedar Catholic now leading by 12. Inglekirk kicks it to Zavala. He'll try the three, and he knocks it in. The Eagles are two for two from outside the circle. It's a 29 to 21 contest as the Eagles are back within eight. Four minutes to play in the first half. Live inside for Samuelson. Frost slips it away. Oh, Frost was open, but they couldn't get the ball to him. Engelker had it. Double dribble. Turnover against Wood River. Alone down the floor. Jason Rugi is coming back in to get some floor time for Wood River. B.J. Engelker taking a break. 29 to 21, the lead. Samuelson inside for Cedar Catholic can't get it, but Darren Becker is there, and 6-6 is nice to have inside with an offensive rebound, and he converts it for the goal. Samuelson, but uh, backside man forgot to check out on the board. 31 to 20, the lead for the Trojans. Hits with a basketball. On him defensively is Chris Necker. Wood River patiently now trying to run the offense. They're getting enough pressure at the point of the ball to make some things happen. Ball slapped around, but Wood River comes away with it right in front of the Cedar Catholic bench. Pitts, right side for Frost. He wants to penetrate, but they're just collapsing in a hurry. Here's Samuelson trying to save the basketball. No, he stepped out of bounds. Wood River will spend another timeout. 2.56 left to play in the first half. It's the C1 state semifinals from the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln. Hardington Cedar Catholic 31, Wood River 20. This is Brian Gallagher along with Carl Lee. The Eagles having trouble getting on track today. Problem compounded by the pregame injury to Lance Parlin, and you can just see his face <laughs> hanging as low as all the moods right now for the Wood River fans. Again, they're suffering that ankle injury. Left ankle, looks like a sprain. Robbie Zavala tries another three. That one rims out. Scott Frost's follow is no good, and Becker will come out. Flaring for Hardington Cedar Catholic. Here's Scott Frost back at the other end, takes it up and in. That is only the second turnover by Cedar Catholic today. But Wood River takes advantage of the play and cuts it down to a nine point margin at 31 to 22. Lob pass, Samuelson went too far. That is two straight turnovers now for Cedar Catholic. Frost managed to come out of there with it. Real and Engelkurt playing the good defense along the baseline. At the two minute mark here in the first half, a 31 to 22 lead. Frost feeds inside. Reels jumper is no good. It kicked around a couple of times, wouldn't go in. Rebound is taken out of there by Chris Necker and VJ Engelker. Bumped him from, from behind, behind and, and picked up, up his, his third foul. Foul is on number 53, VJ Engelker. Catholic defense has slowed down just a bit. It looked. Uh, they're giving the Eagles some shots if they can just get them to fall. Nice pass that time from Frost to get it inside. It looked like real shot was tipped, and it batted around the rim a couple of times. It wouldn't fall in. Chris Necker makes the free throw. Chris Necker. 
shot is no good and Robbie Zavala steps in front to make sure that the rebound and go back into the hands of the shooter. Bead in the middle intended for Jason Reel. Darren Becker tried to subtly slide a hip into him. <laughs> Reel goes crashing to the floor and all of a sudden oh, subtly oh, disappeared and the foul is called. <laughs> So he'll come out. A couple of subs now for Cedar Catholic. Jason Real hits the front end of the one and one. Frank Lammers is back into the contest for Cedar Catholic. Also back in is Kurt Thane. And we've got a fresh face in. Joe Keane is into the contest for the first time for the Trojans. It's an eight point lead for Cedar Catholic. 90 seconds to go in the half. Lob it right side. Pass goes too far. It's going to belong to Wood River. That is three straight turnovers by Cedar Catholic. And all of a sudden, Wood River has a chance to chop that lead down to six and possibly five. Lead to the post to reel. Back out high to Zavala. 1.15 to play in the half. Pitts will try the three. Knuckleball shot is off the mark. The rebound is out of there by Kurt Thay. That ball has no spin as it goes to the goal. Good defense down on the baseline by Zavala, forces the turnover. Cedar Catholic has turned the ball over four straight trips. Scott Frost, jumper will not fall, and a foul is going to be called on Jason Real. Boy, the opportunities are there for Wood River. Yesterday, Frost steps in the lane and makes at least three of those. Today, the ball skips out, and then they get the foul going back the other way. Foul is on number 33, Jason Real. Lammers got the rebound. The foul on Real is his first one and one chance coming up for Cedar Catholic. Ryan Samuelson coming out of the game. 50 seconds left to play in the first half. Free throw try is good. Sat on the rim, rolled around, and fell through. Lammers now one for three from the line. Here's the bonus try. And you'll hear what happened. The Wood River fans will let him know, and you know, how close that wasn't to the ring. 33-24. <laughs> Scott Frost, left, right side rather, gets the jumper off the glass, won't go. Taken out of there by Cedar Catholic, and they'll work it down for one shot. Less than 30 seconds now. 33 to 24. Hardington Cedar Catholic with the basketball, working down the final seconds of the first half. Bob pass left side and patiently eating up clock. Penetration. Ball slapped away. Shot is no good. Rebound. Mueller up and in. Good follow by Eric Mueller. The offensive rebound. Gave him a chance to score. Desperation heave at the buzzer is no good, and Cedar Catholic's lead is double digits as they head to the locker room. It is halftime in the semifinals of the C1 State Basketball Tournament in Lincoln. After two quarters, it's Hardington Cedar Catholic 35, Wood River 24. Go for the gold in Lincoln Eagles. The fans and boosters at the Brass Rail are behind you all the way. Your home for friends, fun, and food. The Brass Rail in Wood River. You're listening.
listening to the 1991 Nebraska Boys State Basketball Tournament on Sunny 108, KSYZ, Grand Island, Hastings Carney. Great to have you along for a little noontime entertainment. So far, it has been a tough effort for the Wood River Eagles here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln as they find themselves down by 11 at the half, 35-24. Again, the Eagles, much like yesterday, found themselves getting off to a slow start from the field. However, today they have been not, not been able to generate the outside scoring threat. They have not been able to get the offense clicking like they did yesterday against Oakland Craig. Two big reasons stand out. One, the defensive pressure by Hardington Cedar Catholic, and two, just the ability to show more of a threat from the guard spot and a lot of that is due in part to the injury to, the Lance. Injury to Lance Parlin suffered during that pregame. You know, you, Carl, you mentioned the, the possibility of other kids stepping forward and uh, trying to really take up, take up the slack of where, where Parlin would normally be a big contributor there. Yesterday, Parlin wasn't a big scoring contributor, but yet his, uh, his ability to get the ball up the floor quickly, his ability to pe uh, penetrate and get the defense working on him opened up other people. And today we're seeing the uh, penetration chores primarily being handled by Scott Frost, and so far his shot has been ineffective. Yes. Couple things, Brian. On the offensive end, uh, in the second quarter, Wood River got the shot that they wanted. They just wouldn't fall. Uh, uh, they're getting eight, ten footers, and they're taking some threes that, that normally are good shots for them. Uh, Lance did a nice job yesterday. He does do a good job of penetrating, getting a couple of people to uh, trap on him. But another thing that, that Lance does is he he scrambles all over the floor, creates some defensive turnovers. Late in the game yesterday, I believe he uh, got two or three steals in key parts of the game, and we're missing that spark right now defensively. Um, a couple uh, thing I noticed with Hardington Peter Catholic, throughout the entire third quarter and about four minutes of the second quarter, they were continually changing their defenses from a 1-3-1 to a man-to-man -man and, and uh, playing wide with their 1-3-1. About the three, four minute mark, they uh, seemed to get a little bit relaxed, and that gave Wood River some chances inside and outside, but they just couldn't capitalize. Uh, they uh, continued going to Samuelson, but Wood River did a nice job defensively there late in the, the second quarter, and uh, they just they just can't capitalize at the offensive end. The thing that uh, seemed ironic, and perhaps it's a tie, uh, when Cedar Catholic seemed to relax defensively as you said all of a sudden offensively their execution wasn't as sharp suddenly they turned the ball over four times in a row in fact unofficially they only managed seven shots in the quarter whereas they were getting all the shots they wanted inside in the first quarter and very effective you know getting the ball down to the post people all of a sudden they're not getting the pass inside they're a little more patient now we did see him throw up a couple of threes but so far their efforts primarily have been to get the ball down on the block. They want the big people to shoot it. They've got Samuelson at 6'4", they've got Becker at 6'6". Six, six. These are the guys they want to have the ball. When they didn't get that ball down there, things changed drastically. They were not the same type of team on the defensive end, as you mentioned, but offensively. All of a sudden, they throw the ball away four straight ties, and that gives Wood River a chance to come back. But the Eagles, as you said, can't get the shots to go in. They're still down. In fact, they're down now by 11. <laughs> Your, your defense goes, your offense goes, or vice versa. It's just a, uh, you got to play both ends. And they got relaxed, and and both ends of the floor, they, they didn't play as well. I noticed uh, Wood River played a little bit better man-to-man, -man, and they were helping down inside on uh, Samuelson. But when they're in the zone, Hardington did a really nice job of spreading the defense out and allowing them to go one-on-one -on -one down inside. Uh, they uh, would swing it about to the 19-foot, uh, uh, from the free throw line extended and uh, they go in from there and that really spreads the defense out and it makes it very vulnerable inside. We will have a chance to give you the numbers unofficially in the first half. When we return, it is halftime here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln. The semifinals of the C1 Boys State Basketball Tournament. At the half, it's Hardington Cedar Catholic 35, Wood River 24.
Pompton and Pantry says Thank good you. luck Eagles in the state basketball tournament. Pompton Pantry serving Central Nebraska with 32 locations for quick as a wink convenience and service. Real winners come through when you need them. Just like the Eagles. Christian 34 30 Christian led that one at the end of the first quarter 15 to 10 a lot of people still talking about the finish of that Lincoln Christian Shelby contest from yesterday afternoon 35 24 the mark here at halftime here's how unofficially the numbers went in the first half Steve Frost leading the way for Wood River with 10 points but did pick up his third foul Scott Frost has six Shane Pitts and Robbie Zavala each with three points Jason Real contributed a free throw. Meanwhile, for Hardington Cedar Catholic, Ryan Samuelson, 19 points. Darren Becker, four. Kurt Thane with three. Aaron Frank, Eric Mueller, and Frank Lammers each with two. Chris Naker finished with a free throw. Turnovers, Wood River with seven. Cedar Catholic with five. All five of the second quarter. Four. Wood River, River four, four turnovers, turnovers in the first quarter, three in the second, rebounding unofficially in favor of Cedar Catholic, 11 to 8. Shooting percentage, Cedar Catholic at 55 unofficially, Wood River is at 36. What's the strategy now? You're playing coach again, all right? What do you do? You've got a big guy, Ryan Samuelson, who's uh, hurting you inside. And you have not been able to die the ball in there like we were able to yesterday. Right now, Wood River is uh, is out of the game. Like their their uh, in, their intensity level is very low. They walk out on the floor, uh, and losing Parlin, I think, is a big part of that. Somehow they've got to get their chins up and uh, and get a little bit more intense offensively and defensively. They've got to make things happen and find a way to to make it happen. Get some park somewhere um, they're getting the shots that they want uh, and they, they've got to fall defensively um, Wood River the press looked like it bothered Hardington just a little bit early they don't like to be pressed real it didn't look, seem to be they didn't get any turnovers out of it but uh, Wood River didn't get a chance to press an awful lot because they weren't getting the shots to fall uh, Hardington Cedar Catholic you got to go back to Samuelson like they did in the first quarter and early in the second quarter just go right back to him, spread Wood River's defense out, and uh, defensively turn it back up a notch uh, the way they were playing early. If they play the kind of defense they did early and uh, Wood River doesn't get on track shooting, it could get a little bit bloody here. Wouldn't hurt to go maybe on a name point run to make things happen. Of course, I thought the Eagles had a great chance. They headed down to 21 to 15. Got a couple of big buckets. Pitts hit a three. They had another bucket. And all of a sudden, here they are back within six, and things were starting to happen. Then all of a sudden, Cedar Catholic runs it right back off again. They run off six points, and that has set the tone for the rest of the half. And now they just need to make something happen quickly and positively, or else this 11-point margin could be a very tough one to overcome here in the last two quarters. Offensively, that was a key point in the game when uh, C.J. Engelker had the ball, could have thrown to Scott Frost down the floor by himself, and he just held up, couldn't see him, and then ended up taking a shot in that possession. And uh, they just got to be more assertive offensively. Peter Catholic with a basketball to start out the third quarter. Wood, Wood River showing a man-to-man -man defense. Bounce pass goes to the right side. 
Frank kicks it down along. Mueller slides along the baseline. Got around a pick nicely. And takes it right up, and Eric Mueller has four, has four points, and that is a 13-point margin, the biggest lead of the game. Rock. Wood River comes back down, runs the offense, gets the pass low to Scott Frost. He takes it to the goal, missed the shot, but did draw the foul, so a two-shot chance coming up. Eric Mueller picks, picks up, up his second, second foul. Scott, Scott Frost at the line to shoot two. Frost with six. Misses that free throw. 37 to 24, the margin. Hardington Cedar Catholic leading it by 13. Second shot goes. The only final in so far today, Grant a winner over Sandy Creek, convincingly 65 to 48. The other contest going on at Pershing Auditorium. Bertrand leading Lincoln Christian, 34 to 30. Samuelson in close, gets the roll. Ryan Samuelson has 21. And that lead is up to 16. Check that, 14 points. Positive on the Wood River bench. Everybody's got their chins down. It's early in the third quarter. Scott Frost throws up a prayer in the lane. Off balance shot is taken out of there by Becker. Back comes Cedar Catholic. Jumper in the lane is no good. We're going to have a held ball. Engelker and Becker tied up. Possession arrow going towards Wood River. Also defensively, they've got to turn up the pressure somehow. Shane Pitts moves it into the forecourt. Zavala, left side, gets it down into the corner to Engelker. Now to Pitts. Cedar Catholic's gone to a zone. They tried to sneak it inside to Scott Frost. And the baseline man in that 1-3-1, Aaron Frank stepped forward to intercept the pass. Good anticipation that time by Frank defensively. Now on the offensive end, Cedar Catholic Samuelson found his spot. This time the shot wouldn't go. Engelker saves the rebound. Boy, he'd made about five in a row from that little spot along the baseline, but this time it wouldn't go in. Just didn't get the roll that time, Brian. Wood River needs to start to make some things happen right now. Here's Engelker in the right corner. Double teamed. Passes slapped away, but out of bounds by Mueller. Look at the basket. Uh, he, he was just looking to, to release the pass back out front. Hits deep in the corner. You can see the spark is gone. Now Steve Frost feeds underneath. Scott Frost trapped along the rim by Samuelson. What a beautiful block. Hand on top. I mean, that was a great play. Mueller's shot is off the mark. There's Steve Frost with the rebound. What a great play by Samuelson. Here's Zavala out high. Pitts looks at the bucket. Back to Zavala. Now Pitts will try the three. That's off the mark, and a rebound is taken out of there by Kurt Thane. Naked yesterday, they're not falling yet for him. And there, and there. Position, he's got room, to, room and time to shoot. Here's Thane trying a three, and that one goes. One goes. When it rains, it pours, and it is a thunderstorm here at the Sports Center. 41 to 25, it's a 16 point margin for Cedar Catholic. Less than five minutes to play in the third quarter. Zavala looks to Pitts, gets it deep in the corner to Engelker. Lob pass inside for Steve Frost, goes too far. Mueller brings it back the other way, was up one on two, so he pulls up, waits for help. Good decision by Mueller. Feed to the right side. Frank fouled along the baseline. Zavala trying to step in, put a body on him, and drew the foul before he could get the shot away. Harding's is just playing with so much confidence right now. They're just relaxed and playing the game and they're going to continue to to just roll if, uh, unless Wood River can find some way to, to turn up the defensive pressure or get the hole a little bit. Neil Smith gone ahead and called a skull session. A timeout on the floor. 437 to play in the third quarter. Cedar Catholic 41. Wood River 25. <laughs> Yes. 
Shane Gallagher and Carl Dietz back again at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. The winner of this game will take on Wahoo Newman for the state championship tomorrow. Right now, Cedar Catholic cruising 41 to 25. Trojans with a basketball. Bob inside. Samuelson from point blank range raises his point total for the day to 23. Raises the lead to 18. Wood River having trouble just even attacking the basket. Now Frost had a puppy inside and couldn't get that to go. The Eagles can't get their easy shots to fall. and Hardington's getting everything to fall. Underneath they go, Mueller off the glass. There's a perfect example. Off balance shot, bounced around in the rim a couple of times and rolled in. Mueller has six. And the lead now 20, 45 to 25. Engelkurt deep in the right corner. Again, Parlin was injured in the pregame warmup and has not seen any action. It is having an effect on how things have gone today. Basically, just part of what's been a big problem, the biggest problem in the form of Ryan Samuelson. Foul called on Mueller, his third. Engelker tried to bring it in along the baseline, ran with a basketball from a designated spot, so the turnover gets it back to Cedar Catholic. That's the tenth turnover of the day against the Eagles. Jason Ruge comes back in, or rather Troy Ruge, excuse me. 45 to 25, three and a half minutes to play in the third quarter, and Cedar Catholic on a roll. Three-point tries off the mark, shovel pass inside, Mueller with the beautiful feed from Aaron Frank. Off the rebound. The Trojans' lead is 22. The Eagles turn it over. Zavala and Rugi playing catch in the left corner, and that one went right through Rugi's hands and out of bounds. <laughs> Eagles have been outscored 12 to 1 in the quarter. Mueller loses it into the lane, bounces right to Samuelson's hand. That's off the mark. Offensive rebound, no good. Tip try is off the mark. Mueller climbs the back of Troy Rugi and picks up his fourth foul. Right now, you're just trying to find the positives. That's as many shots as we have seen or other Hardington Cedar Catholic miss so far in the quarter. Forty-seven to twenty-five. Wood River in a deep hole with two fifty to play in the third quarter. Here's Shane Pitts with the three-point try. That one will not go in. Rebound is taken out of there again by Aaron Frank. Back the other way they go. Nice lead pass. Samuelson will get the goal, but you talk about a team effort on the full court attack. That was pretty. Steve Frost powers his way inside. Missed the shot, but did draw the foul. The foul is on Frank Lammers. Lammers picks up the foul, Steve his Frost second. Frost at the line to shoot a pair. Frost is two for three from the line today. Leads Wood River scoring with 10. That one rims out. But somehow you just felt that it would. Yeah. <laughs> second shot, no good. Rebound snatched away by Lammers. Boy, the confidence factor is so different from one end of the floor to the other. Cedar Catholic just running through things and executing much like they would in practice. And right now, Wood River is literally going through the motions. Lammers gets the shot away in the lane and knocks it in. Frank Lammers with four. 51 to 25. Jason Reel. Waiting to come into the contest for Wood River. Three-point try is good. Basket by Scott Frost. Scott Frost from long distance. Give him 11 points. 
Steele, Scott Frost trying to lead it back on a one-man show. Ball is slapped away. Out of bounds. Off Cedar Catholic. First turnover of the quarter against the Trojans. They struggle with the basketball a bit in the second quarter. Steve Frost out. Engelker, jumper from the right side is short. Rebound in the lane is cleared by Cedar Catholic. Two Wood River players had a hand on it. All of a sudden coming out of there with it was Dave Winant. Inside they go. The layup is there for Frank Lambert. Samuelson is out of the contest for Cedar Catholic. 53 to 27. The margin back to 26 points. Scott Frost, left side. Jumper's good. Basket by Scott Frost. Frost with six in the quarter, 12 for the game, 53 to 29. They've got a long way to come back. Lammers with a great weak hand move. He, a right-handed player took it to the goal with the left hand, a quick little drop step. Got the bucket. Three-point try, no good by Wood River. Rebound is cleared by Joe Keane. Ball out of bounds. It'll belong to Cedar Catholic. 31 seconds left to play. Here in the third quarter, 55 to 29. Cedar Catholic has opened up a 26-point lead. This is much like their contest yesterday. They were in a tie ball game and then opened it up in the third quarter. They've really opened it up here. Running jump shot is good from the left side. That is Joe Keane. Kerr swings it out high. Rugi to the post. Back to Pitts. Seven seconds left in the quarter. They're going to have to think about a shot here. Engel Kerr will try the three. It's off the mark. Rebound is out to Cedar Catholic. Late shot is too late. And hit the back of the rim. Those guys are around the basket with everything. We played three quarters, and Cedar Catholic is in command. Wood River with a long way back if they want to make it to the finals tomorrow. After three quarters from the Devaney Sports Center in Lincoln, it's Hardington Cedar Catholic 57, Wood River 29. into the fourth quarter. They uh, ruled that Scott Frost made a two-point goal and not a three, apparently, so. Eagles were outscored 22 to five in the quarter. Shot by Cedar Catholic, no good. Back come the Eagles. Engelker swings it across the top. Pitts back to Engelker. Looks and fires from the three-point land. Cedar Catholic. Very patient now with the basketball. Samuelson on the bench has already done enough damage with 25 points. And they don't really need to get him back in the game to inflict any more. They want to make sure that he's saved and ready for tomorrow. Unless something miraculous happens here, it'll be Cedar Catholic and Wahoo Newman for the state crown. Foul underneath on Cedar Catholic. Chris Naker got a hand in and picked up the foul. The foul is on Naker. Angle curve will shoot one and one. Tough to work on in practice. You lose kids that way. <laughs> B.J. Engelker gets his first point of the afternoon. Front end of the one and one. Eagles are in the bonus the rest of the way. Now Ryan Samuelson will come back in the ball game, along with Darren Becker and Eric Mueller. I've got to be honest, I think if I'm Bob Geary for Cedar Catholic, I would keep Samuelson out. I mean, there's one thing you want to get him his minutes, but also just, you know, here's an opportunity. You're leading by 27. And 
strange things happen, and if you don't need him, I don't think you use him. Especially they've got to come back at 11.30 tomorrow and play again. Cedar Catholic with the basketball. They tried to try to run an alley-oop to Mueller. B.J. Engelker with good defensive anticipation stepped in front. Mueller tried to go over the top, and we've got a pushing foul called on Mueller, and that's his fifth foul. The foul is on number 33, Eric Mueller, his fifth. Eric Mueller leaves the game with eight points. Leaving to a standing ovation from the Trojan fans on hand. Dan Weidenfeld is into the game for Hardington Cedar Catholic. B.J. Engelker will have another shot at a one and one. Free throws good. This would be the easiest way to get back into the contest is just be draining free throws all day, but they're going to have to really create some things offensively to make that happen. A lot of penetration, getting the ball down into the post. And get a few bounces, and the bounces have not gone their way today. Wood River with a quick team on the floor. Three-point try is off the mark. Rebound by Samuelson. A foul is called. They're going to call Samuelson for a foul on the rebound. I think he was pushing off on the rebound when he went up. And I, that's his first foul. Hardington Cedar Catholic will spend a timeout. 6.39 to play in the fourth quarter. Cedar Catholic in command. It's 57 to 33. Jason Gray will shoot one and one. Ryan Gallagher along with Carl Dietz back again at the Sports Center. Jason Real to try the one and one after the foul on Samuelson. That was his second foul. One and one tries, no good. Weidenfeld comes out with a rebound. Been a tough day for Wood River. They got off to a slow start shooting again and were just not able to get over the hump like they were yesterday. Here's Real coming up with the steal, takes it to the goal and got the lay in. There's the hustle play, the spark that they were looking for. And is there enough time? 6.15 to play in the fourth quarter. Samuelson shows the ability to put the ball on the floor and take it to the goal as he got a pass out near midcourt, dribbled twice, and sailed in for an easy two. He just knew he was going to the basket all the way, and Wood River got out of the way for him. 59 to 35, less than six minutes to go. Real with a basketball, swings it out to Pitts. Across the top, now deep in the right corner, B.J. Engelker tries the three and knocks it in. B.J. has seven points all here in the fourth quarter. It's a 59 to 38 contest. Steve Frost getting set to come in at the next chance for Wood River. Eagles go to a man-to-man -man defense. Around the screen, Thane. Picks it out high to Aaron Frank. Weidenfeld looks, fires left side. That's off the mark. Ball will go out of bounds and belong to Wood River. Frost is in. Also back into the contest for Hardington Cedar Catholic is Joe Keane. Jason Reel comes out. He put a spark on the floor. Now we'll have to see if that spark will stay alive. 5.05 to play and counting in the fourth quarter. 59 to 38, Cedar Catholic with the lead. They steal the basketball. Lob pass for Samuelson. Troy Ruggie went airborne to take it right back. Pitts swings it right side. That pass for Scott Frost is picked off. Boy, as a coach, you're going, no, no, no. But then you know, all of a sudden, if it works out, you say, nice pass. Four and a half minutes left to play. Lob it inside. Samuelson dribbles once, turns in the lane, shots away. No good, but a foul call. 
We have seen impressive post people in the two days of action that we've been able to watch. Yesterday, watching a solid effort inside by Tracy Denton. Today, another strong showing, this time in the form of Ryan Samuelson. Samuelson now with 28. A perfect six for six from the line. And the jinx didn't work as he made the seven. Substitution, Samuelson will go out. Undoubtedly for the last time. Becker is back in. Wood River with a basketball. Engelker likes that spot in the corner. Missed on the three try. Keen clears and Cedar Catholic comes to the other end. Becker underneath. Had it rejected. Engelker went up to stuff the 6-6 Darren Becker. Ruge out high to Engelker. Back to Pitts. He'll try that three. The knuckle ball's in. Shane Pitts with his second three-point goal of the day. Six points all told. Still a 20-point deficit. Less than four minutes to go. Out of bounds. Aaron Frank ran into a double team and tried to pull the feet back before he went out, but Gary Pence was right on the sideline and sends the ball back the other way. Cedar Catholic really dropping off inside. Steve Frost trying to get it to Scott on a quick little give and go and anticipating nicely was Joe Keane and stepped up and picked it up. And they lob it inside. And you get a bunny bucket. Todd Leader has his first points of the game. Pitts way out tries the three. Shots no good and that's Becker up for the board. 63 to 41. Cedar Catholic has been in command all the way. Frost slapped it away for a moment. Ball is recovered by leader. Steve Frost is there to bring it back the other way. Here comes Wood River on the fly. Scott Frost underneath. Got it. Nice lead pass that time by Rugi. Half court trap. Cedar Catholic's able to work their way out of it. Still a 20-point contest. Ball is kicked away by Ruge. Robbie Zavala is in. Jason Real is in. Steve Frost comes out of the game. Some amazing things need to happen here in the final two minutes plus. That isn't one of them. Scott Frost just picked up a foul going for the steal. Darren Becker will go to the free throw line with a one and one chance. Bob Geary sending in some subs for Cedar Catholic. Dale Schmidt doesn't look a lot different facially than he did yesterday when he was enjoying a 16-point lead late in the game. But deep down, you know, his heart is saying, why did it have to happen to us? First, he lose Parlin in the pregame warm-ups. Then you start out shooting cold again, and today they just could have, couldn't dig themselves out of the hole. Here's Pitts with the three from the left side. Got it in. Well, Pence is doing what he can to keep him in the contest, but time is running out. 63 to 46. Pence with nine. More white jerseys heading for the bench now. Weidenfeld trying to take it into the lane and travel with the basketball. Rich Soto and Kurt Redding are coming into the game. Zavala and Real come out. Just over two minutes to play and counting. 63 to 46. Cedar Catholic on their way to the state finals against Wahoo Newman. The 11.30 tomorrow here at the Sports Center. Engelker with the three try from the right side. Ball slapped out of bounds, but that's going to be a foul. Foul 
Ohio's on Todd Leader going over the top of Scott Frost. And Scott Frost with a chance to cut into this lead, but again, time is a huge problem. And that foul, I don't think they knew exactly who fouled there for a minute. Now he, BJ picked up another foul on the rebound. Angle Kerr was playing for the rebound. Came over the uh, came over the back. That is only the fourth team foul on Wood River here in the second half. Now they'll turn on the defensive pressure. They've got somebody wide open down the floor, and now they'll take advantage of it. Easy two. Chris Naker gets the bucket. Give him three points on the day. Hits right corner, drawing all kinds of company. Naker took that in with his left hand. I don't know if he's left-handed or not, but that was a nice left-handed move. Pitts swings it to Engel Kerr right side. Try the three again. Count it. Three-point goal, Engel Kerr. DJ Engel Kerr knocks it in. Engel Kerr will be back. Picks up the foul there. And that's number five on BJ. BJ does a lot of shooting. He's a nice shooter. Into the game for Wood River, Ryan Gannon. 116 to play. one and one. 65 to 48. Hardington Cedar Catholic rolling to their 20th win of the year. Steal off the rebound, up and in. Basket by Dave Wyant. Dave Wyant gets, gets the bucket. Frost, the offensive end, takes it to the goal, is fouled by Wiedenfeld. The foul is on number 43. Scott Frost will go to the line again with the one and one try. The thing I like about Wynan, did you see him race down the floor after he made that bucket? He, he, he scored a state tournament. I can play defense now. <laughs> 67 48. Free throw tries off the mark. Here's a steal. Pitts gets it ahead. Scott Frost is open, and I think he tried for a dunk, changed his mind. They tried to save the ball off the baseline and ended up turning it over. I think he was thinking duck, and all of a sudden he said, I'm not sure if I got the footing right here, and that indecision cost him. And exit to your left. Exit to your left. I kind of like your golf swing. Wait a minute. It's windy. <laughs> 67 to 48, coming down to final seconds now. Bob inside a foul call. Now will be against Ryan Cannon and free throws coming up for Todd Leader will shoot one and one. Leader. Cedar Catholic bench celebrating. They will take on Wahoo Newman for the C1 state championship tomorrow. Ball slapped out of bounds by Wood River. Cedar Catholic will get another chance. The Eagles, meanwhile, will wrap up a strong 90-91 season with a mark of 16 and 7. In the lane, jumper by Nakers off the mark. Soto has the rebound, lobs it out to Pitts. Goes behind the back. Pitts in his final game in a Wood River uniform, loses the ball. It is just not Wood River's day. No. Lob it ahead. Jumper from the left side, off the mark. Rebound, Wood River to Pitts and see if he'll take one more three here. Yep, he'll try it from the right side. Drew, did he draw the foul? No. Ball slapped away. Pitts gets it out on top. Wants another three. Throws it up off balance. It won't go, but that was the story of the day. Final score. Hardington Cedar Catholic 67. Wood River 48. The Trojans will go on to the state championship game tomorrow.
for Wood River. It's a semifinal appearance, but a tough way to lose here at the Devaney Sports Center. I'm Brian Gallagher along with Carl Dietz.